I was absolutely going to open this video by juggling these awesome Easter eggs. Um, then I remembered that I don't know how to juggle, so that's not gonna work. It is Saturday. It is week number 13, and we are making King Arthur's carrot cake cupcakes. After all, Easter is tomorrow if you celebrate, and it's spring. I don't know about you, but the grass is green, and the trees have leaves and buds, and there's flowers blooming everywhere, so what could be better way to celebrate than with carrot cake? Um, I guess let's get baking. <laughs> I forgot to tell you about what the 2024 Baking Challenge is. If you're new here, I've selected one brand new recipe every single week to try out. It's a recipe that I've never made before. I picked it from one of my favorite websites, King Arthur Baking Company, and we're gonna try it together every Saturday morning. I'll post the video sometime between seven and nine, and you can bake along with me if you want. Now this is my baking challenge, not yours, so you don't have to play along. I can promise you a couple things. The first one is that I'm baking on a budget, so you're not gonna see a ton of fancy ingredients. I mean, the price of butter is through the roof already. Don't need to add to that any more than I have to. The second thing is that I'm gonna be cutting as many corners as possible. If there's a shortcut, I'm gonna take it and that's okay. The third thing is that I may end up having to alter recipes because we have a picky eater in the house and I have got a really long list of allergies. And the fourth and final thing I can promise you is that I'm gonna make mistakes. I am absolutely gonna mess up some recipes. You can go see some previous recipes that I have messed up completely, and that's okay. I'm not a professional baker. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just here for fun and food, and you can join along. Even if you don't think you can bake, give it a try. You may be surprised. Happy spring, friends. I am excited about carrot cake cupcakes and a little nervous too. Um, I've never really gotten into the whole carrot cake thing. I don't know, it's probably the texture thing again, but I'm excited to try it because Scott really likes it and everybody I know is like carrot cake, so here we are. It's a cupcake recipe. Yes, it's from scratch, but it's not hard. Cupcakes are not hard. It's flour, it's sugar, it's oil, it's eggs. And in this case, it's also carrots. Um, so I guess let's just jump right into it here. Now I'm going old school again because I forgot to charge my iPad. So I have written the recipe down and we are starting everything off with our sugar. Um, yes, this is my sugar. So we have two cups of granulated sugar going into the mixer, two whole cups, okay? Along with that is a teaspoon of salt. We have four large room temperature eggs. Okay, and the dishwasher telling me it's done. Um, we also have, what did I say? Oh yeah, my teaspoon of salt is in there, granulated sugar, eggs, the oil, which is one cup and one fourth of vegetable oil which seems a little excessive to me, but what do I know? I've never actually made carrot cake before. Um, so we also have our spices. This is a tablespoon of cinnamon, which doesn't seem like nearly enough to me, a half a teaspoon of ginger, a fourth of a teaspoon of cloves. So all of that is going in. And look at me, I pre-measured everything after the last time when I messed that whole disaster up and didn't have enough dough. <laughs> so we're going to get this going with the mixer. Now you're going to want two cups of all-purpose flour and inside of that flour you're going to have your one and one half teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. So you're going to mix that up with your flour. And then after your wet mixture is done being mixed up, we're gonna start adding the dry mixture to it. And I'm gonna use a spoon to just spoon a little bit in at a time. If I can ever get this last egg, there's always one, right? There's one egg here that hasn't, uh, 
There it goes. Okay. It smells good. All right, I'm gonna knock this down to stir and I'm just gonna start kind of spooning my flour in. a Little bit at a time. You could probably dump yours all in, but I'm taking the slower approach to this today. Um, we don't actually have any plans for Easter. I'm sure that the Easter Bunny is going to visit, but other than that, we're just staying home and getting some gardening done and some lawn work. Which works for me because we've all kind of had the ick um, since we got back from vacation. So we're just kind of taking it easy. <laughs> taking it easy, trying to make sure that we're like 100% recovered. Now I see the reason for adding all of the oil because it is a thicker batter. And I still have like a whole cup of flour to go, at least. Maybe a cup and a half. Um, the other thing that this recipe calls for is three cups of finely shredded carrots, very finely shredded, and a cup of walnuts, I believe chopped. Now, I'm leaving the walnuts out, and uh, I will be stopping the camera when I do the carrots. So, I have a weird thing. Um, I have got some weird food allergies. I know I've mentioned that in the past, and one of those is I have what's called an oral allergy to raw carrots and raw potatoes. So when I go to shred those carrots, I'm gonna use my KitchenAid shredder and I'm gonna put on a mask and some goggles and some gloves because if I come into contact with raw carrots, um, I'm gonna be a mess for the next 48 hours. I won't be able to breathe, I may get hives, my eyes are gonna itch and swell up and my mouth is gonna swell up. It's it's a whole deal. Um, <laughs> it's not a common allergy, thank goodness, uh, but yours truly happens to have that one, and it's not a lot of fun. I, uh, I actually spent the night in the ER a couple days ago because I had an allergic reaction. Um, it was hives, and it came on slowly, but I woke up in the middle of the night and my hands were just on fire itching and I had just hives spreading up my arms. Um, and then by the time I got to the hospital, it was like spreading up the back of my neck to my face. So it's a good thing I went in. We don't know what caused it. Uh, there had been some raw potatoes in the kitchen the day before. Um, and I had done dishes that morning, so maybe I had come into contact with something. I don't know. <laughs> but some um, IV, Benadryl, and steroids kicked the problem, and I'm not anxious to recreate it. So I'm going to be turning off the camera and being very, very careful. Or I may just ask Scott to come down and do that part for me. He's always willing. Um, I really love carrots too. I mean, obviously not raw carrots anymore, but I used to love raw carrots. Um, and I used to, you know, cook with potatoes all the time. And now that's, now that doesn't happen anymore. That's a Scott thing. <laughs> I still grow carrots and potatoes. All right, I need a spatula. Do, do, do. So let me scrape down the sides. I've got some flour just around the top that hasn't incorporated in. I want to make sure we get all of it. It's a nice um, oily batter, so it's not really sticking to anything. Um, it is a thick batter, like I said. One thing I forgot to do is preheat the oven. We're going at 350. Oh, it would help if I you know, actually hit start. So 350 degrees is what you need to preheat your oven to. Also, you should get out your stick of butter, your eight ounces of cream cheese, because that's gonna be for the frosting that we're gonna make and that all needs to be room temperature. This makes 24 cupcakes, and I did not uh, cut the recipe because I'm gonna take some to the neighbors. So this is, this is the recipe as written. 
Um, yeah, it's a very, it's a very thick, thick batter. So anyways, I am going to, I'm at the point now where it is carrot time. So I'm going to get prepared for that and I'll see you back in just a couple minutes. I decided to have Scott go ahead and shred the carrots. I don't want to take any chances. Now you can grease your muffin tins or you can use papers and it does say to grease the paper too. I skipped that step. That seems redundant. Um, I'm just going to use these really great bright Easter colors. I've got yellow and green and pink and purple and blue. So I'm just going to set up my tins with those while I wait and uh, I will see you back when the carrots are in the batter. Okay, Scott came down and took care of the carrots for me. So now it's time to fill the muffin pans. And I know this is uh, 24 cupcakes, but I am gonna do this in batches of a dozen because I am not prepared and that's okay. Um, oh no, I touched a raw carrot. So much fun, so much fun. So the recipe doesn't say like how full to fill the muffin cups. So I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. Have my scoop out, put that there. I, it looks, you know, orange, cause carrots. I'm not gonna smell because um, <laughs> I don't want to start sneezing. And I'm a little gun shy here of anything that may send me back to the hospital. So we're taking it easy. Um, I think, so this is a medium scoop and I'm thinking like a scoop and a half is what I've got going on here. So they're most of the way full. They may end up running over. Eh, what are you going to do? That's my, like, that's my struggle with cupcakes is that I usually end up overfilling because I really hate when the cupcakes uh, don't rise above the edge of the liners. It bothers me. I like, I like big cupcakes and I cannot lie. So do with that what you will. All right. It's really neat though because the batter absolutely turned orange. I am putting my muffin tins on a baking sheet just in case I do have some uh, overage here. That's okay. Precaution <laughs> beats having to clean your oven, which really I need to do because the door is kind of like gross, but whatever. I hate cleaning ovens. It is my least favorite chore. I know you can do like the self cleaning, but I don't know. That seems, that just seems dangerous. That just seems like it's not a good idea. Now, if I end up popping an allergic reaction to this cake batter, I'm not going to make the next dozen. I'll just live with the dozen that I have. Hopefully that won't be the case though. A little more here, a little more there. All right. These are going to go into the oven for 21 to 24 minutes. So I'm putting mine in for 23. Okay. Now you could make the frosting, but I'm going to do that when we come back. So that way the cupcakes can be cooling while I make the frosting. So I'll see you back in about 24 minutes. All right, there are 24, uh, 22 cupcakes because uh, somebody else needed to sample before they even got iced and that's totally fine. They smell good, they look good. I'm excited to try them. And now it's time to make the frosting. So for that, Remember we set out our butter and our cream cheese earlier. You're gonna want that room temperature. That is eight tablespoons of butter or an entire stick of butter. And I was gonna hand mix this, but I'm tired. You're also gonna need a 
package of cream cheese, eight ounces of cream cheese. I enjoy cream cheese frosting, but I don't enjoy cream cheese. So I don't know. Do with that what you will. Let's see here. I particularly don't like getting it out of the package. Like, pick. It just is a pain to work with. So, and I always get it on my hands, and I know that baking can be messy, and I know I always make a mess, but I don't like making a mess. So, <laughs> get out. Why won't you finish opening? Um, I don't like the smell of cream cheese. Why don't I like the flavor? I don't know. Make sure we get all of that off of there. Ah. Good enough. And I had my whisk paddle out for this. Um, okay, we need a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. which is like that much. We'll go with that and we'll say that, that much. Uh, two teaspoons of vanilla. This is a half teaspoon, so I'm just gonna, one, two, three, four, sure, that works. Now I'm sure, even though I don't have the directions right in front of me, we're actually gonna want to get all of this nice and mixed up before we add our powdered sugar. A little bit more mixing. Um, it's gonna be about two and a half cups of powdered sugar and then we're gonna add milk or heavy cream until you get the consistency that you want. In the meantime, while this is starting to mix up, let's talk about how you're gonna frost your cupcakes. You could go the old school method and use a knife. Um, I hate that, it takes too long and I can never make it look pretty. So what I'm gonna use is one of these decorating tips here. I have this giant one, could use that. Uh, I, I recommend a star tip. So these are star tips and they give it that frilled edge. You could also just go with a regular circle. If you don't have decorating tips, put your frosting into like a Ziploc bag and cut off one corner and then you can just squeeze it out, start in the center um, if you want it to be more flat and just kind of swirl around, start on the edge and build up like a cone if you want your frosting to be domed. Okay. Now it's time to start adding my sugar. And I'm gonna do this a half a cup at a time, okay? Because I don't want to get this everywhere and I don't want to bog down my machine. Oop, that's a little much. And because I always lose track of how much I've added, every time I dump a cup or a measuring cup in, I move one of these over here. Because I know it's two and a half cups. I'm working with a half. I know I need five. I know I have to do that five times. So. That is my own little measuring trick there. So dump and move. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to add some milk. I'm not gonna add heavy cream, I'm just gonna add milk to mine. And dump. Let me go grab the milk real fast. Just gonna 
add a splash of milk and I'm gonna kind of eyeball it. And then I'm gonna turn my, uh, turn my mixer up a little and wait and see how it's going. I know I'll need to add mil more milk. Now, before, before I add more milk, I'm gonna turn my mixer down a little bit. Otherwise, it's just gonna splash everywhere. That was probably about a tablespoon and a half of milk. And listen, if you add too much liquid, add more powdered sugar. It'll be okay. Again, this is one of those things where you can just kind of go back and forth on. There's no, there's no rules. If you add too much of one thing, add a little bit more of the other until you get it to the right consistency. So this consistency is pretty good, except I have a lot of powdered sugar hanging out on the sides. So I'm going to scoop that in. Oh yeah, this looks great. And then get that incorporated and mixed in. Looks good to me. Looks good, it smells good. I'm gonna call it a win here. Let me put my milk up, grab my decorating bag. Let's see here, I just need one. I like these reusable decorating bags if I am gonna decorate with a with a tip. I'm kind of a Wilton girl. I taught um, cake decorating classes, Wilton one and two back in the day. If anybody remembers Garden Ridge um, back in the early 2000s, yeah, that is where I taught cake decorating classes at for I think one summer. Um, so let me take this off of here. One bowl. Boom. All right. I do love a good cream cheese frosting, but man, is it messy. I thought about like, I had some leftover fondant from Mal's birthday cake last weekend and I thought that maybe I would make up some cute little carrots to put, to decorate on these, but you know what? I don't have the capacity. I do not have the mental capacity to do something like that this time. <laughs> Maybe next time. This time I need simple. I need easy. I need, let's not make this overly complicated and take too much time. But you could do that if you wanted. You could color your icing, a little bit of food coloring could turn it pink, you could turn it green, yellow, whatever, purple, I don't know. Lots of different things that you could do. Okay, I think that bag is pretty much full. So let me try to close it. Now for when you're decorating cupcakes, and you're not doing like really fine detail, a really big bag is always a lot better. But here, let me move this and move this and move that and zoom in a little here so you can kind of get a close up. Okay, cupcake. Twist the end of the bag, starting in the center and just swirling. There. Now it's an iced cupcake. Again, you can do the outside instead and then kind of go up and now it's not flat. It's got a point to it. Oh, that one. Some of these are still warm from the oven since I did mine in two batches, but you know, keep it simple. Add sprinkles. You don't have to add little fondant fondant carrots or bunny ears or anything like that. Add sprinkles. They make, they make an Easter mix of sprinkles. 
Don't make this hard on yourself. The other thing you could do is you could just keep the tip down low in the center and not move and then pull up and you can do that a couple times and now you've got little little like well, it's harder to do if you want it to keep its shape you're going to need to add more uh, powdered sugar you're going to want a stiffer icing than what I have if you don't really care then and you just want it to squeeze out easy and you don't want to kill your hands add more milk you want a looser icing that way all right, my piping bag is empty, so I'm gonna refill. And uh, I'm gonna finish icing the rest of these and then we'll do our taste test. Okay, all of the cupcakes are iced and now it is time for the taste test. Taste test. Cupcake! <gasps> <laughs> Seriously. Oh my. Okay, so that happened. <laughs> okay. A little unexpected. Um, I'm going to try one now. <laughs> Jeez. It's never dull around here. Okay. Flavor's good. Hate the texture. Not a fan of the texture. But if you love carrot cake, you're going to love this. I promise. Well, that wraps up yet another week of the 2024 baking challenge. I am bitterly disappointed that I couldn't get past the texture of these cupcakes because the flavor was great and the icing was absolutely out of this world. I really enjoy the way that my kitchen smells right now. And if you don't have texture problems, you're going to be fine with this. It's a really tasty, easy recipe for traditional carrot cake, but in cupcake form. So I hope that you got to bake along and I hope that you enjoyed it. I can't believe we just finished with March. We're on to April and I've got some really fun stuff planned. So I do hope that you will hit that subscribe button below and follow along while I tackle a new recipe every single week from my favorite King Arthur Baking Company. Um, every Wednesday morning over on Facebook, I will post the ingredient list for what we're baking. So you should follow along over there too. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I will see you next time.